your sincerely or yours sincerely is it there there or there I know how frustrating it can be to have these common English mistakes pop up anywhere from everyday conversations to writing emails. But guess what? I am going to break them down and by the end of this session, you will have all the tools and tricks to tackle these challenges. Get them right every time and speak English like a pro. Hi, I am Asa and welcome back to English Lessons with Asa. First up, we have the classic confusion between there, there, and there. Quite similar pronunciation. Let's talk about there. There refers to a place or position. It's like saying in that location. Here are a few examples. The book is over there on the table. It means the book is on the table in that location. We must stop there. It means we have to stop in that location. We must stop there in that location. Can we sit there by the window? It means can we sit in that location by the window? To help you avoid confusion, here is a tip for you. Remember there talks about a place. So think about the word here. They actually rhyme here, there. Here also talks about a place, location, or position. Here, there, they are both locations or places. So just think about the word here, then you understand you have to use the word there. If you're talking about something belonging to someone or some people, use there. E I R, there. There is a possessive adjective, it shows ownership. Here are a few examples. Their house is really beautiful. This shows ownership. It means the house belongs to them. They own the house. So their house is really beautiful. I borrowed their car for the weekend. They own the car. The car belongs to them. I borrowed it. It belongs to them. Their car. I borrowed their car for the weekend. Parents are keen on their children. The children belong to the parent. Parents are keen on their children. Remember, there is a possessive adjective. When you want to talk about position or ownership, you use the word there, E-I-R, there. Lastly, we have there. There is simply a contraction or a shortened version of they are. You can replace they are with there and the sentence still makes sense. Let's look at some examples. They're going to the movies tonight. They are going to the movies tonight. So uh, instead of saying, I think they are excited about the trip, you can simply say, they are excited about the trip. I think they're excited about the trip. Basically, contractions are put in place to make speaking simpler and smoother. They're going on vacation this November. They are going on vacation this November. In simple form, they're going on vacation this November. Now, let's put these three together in one sentence and see how it's going to sound. The children are visiting their grandparents, but I'm not sure how long they're going to be there. Remember, there refers to a place or location. There indicates possession or ownership. There is simply a contraction of they are. Yours sincerely or yours sincerely? First things first. Yours sincerely isn't correct. The correct phrase is yours sincerely. With the S, yours sincerely. This phrase is used to sign of formal letters and emails. Basically, it means you are expressing your feelings or thoughts sincerely. Here's how to use that. Dear Mr. Smith, da, 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 thank you for your assistance. Yours sincerely. I look forward to your response. Yours sincerely. The phrase yours sincerely is a polite way to close a letter or an email, especially when you know the name of the recipient. Now, let's talk about why yours sincerely isn't correct. Your 
is a possessive adjective. It means something belongs to you. But it doesn't make sense in this context. You wouldn't say your sincerely because it doesn't convey ownership properly in a closing phrase. So remember, it's yours sincerely, not your sincerely. The next mistake on our list is a linguistic puzzle that can even trip up or confuse native speakers. Double negation. Two, double negation. Double negation happens when two negative words are put together in the same sentence, which can confuse the meaning. In standard English, double negation usually creates positive statement, which typically isn't what the speaker intends. Let's look at some examples. She didn't say nothing. She did not say nothing. Here we have two negative words. She did not, not the first negative word, say nothing nothing the second negative word so when you say she didn't say nothing what she actually mean is she said something remember two negative words create a positive statement there are two ways or two correct ways to put this wrong statement instead of saying she didn't say nothing which is wrong you should say she said nothing only one negative word which is nothing or she did not say anything only one negative word not so don't say she didn't say nothing no you should say she said nothing or she didn't say anything tips to avoid double negation use not or never with a positive word and do not combine no not or never not put them all together in one sentence no you use either one no not or never just one with a positive word all right let's start from the basics what is the difference between lay and lie lay means to put or place something down something that is being laid down it requires a direct object whereas lie means to be in a resting position or to assume a horizontal position imagine your type what do you do you go lie down and take a nap it doesn't require a direct object let's look at some examples i lay the book on the table every night she laid the keys on the counter yesterday notice how the book and keys are the direct object in the sentences remember lay requires a direct object i lie down on the couch when i get home he lay on the bed for hours yesterday in these two examples, there is no direct object following the words lie or lay. Here's a quick way to remember the difference. Use lay when you are placing something down. And use lie when you are getting in a resting position yourself. Now, let's look at the forms of these verbs in different tenses to make it clearer. In the present tense, we have, I lay the book on the table. I lie down for a nap. In the past tense, we have, yesterday, I laid the book on the table. Yesterday, I lay down for a nap. In the past participle, we have, I have laid the book on the table. I have lain down for a nap. Quite tricky, I know. Notice how the past tense of lie is lay. But remember, lie never has a direct object. Lay, on the other hand, always does. Affect and defect. These two are commonly mixed up words and we are going to clear up the confusion between them as well. First, let's talk about affect. Affect is a verb which means to influence or to cause a change in something. The weather can affect your mood. Her speech affected everyone in the room. In these two sentences, affect is an action. It means something is influencing something else. The weather can change your mood. The weather is influencing your mood. Her speech changed everyone's attitude or mood in the room. Her speech affected means influenced everyone in the room. Her parents' decision will not affect her future. I hope the new round of layoffs will not affect me. Effect, on the other hand, is a noun. 
it means the result or an outcome of an action or an event examples the new law had a positive effect on the environment one of the side effects of the medicine is drowsiness in these two sentences effect is a thing it's showing the results of an action the outcome of a decision or an action a quick way to remember affect is a verb it's an action while on the other hand effect is a noun it's either a consequence an impact or the end result of something the new policy will greatly affect the company's profitability the new policy had a significant effect on the company's profitability his words deeply affected her emotions his words had profound effect on her emotions notice the difference let's move on to the next what do you think is wrong with this sentence of course incorrect word order word order is very important in questions in english questions typically follow a specific structure question word plus auxiliary verb plus subject plus main verb now let's break it down with some examples you are going to the store mm -mm, incorrect the correct way to put this sentence is are you going to the store the auxiliary verb are comes before the subject you are you going to the store where you are going mm -mm, no the correct sentence is where are you going again we notice the auxiliary verb are comes before the subject you following the question word where where are you going not where you are going mm -mm. where are you going always remember the auxiliary verb comes right after the question word or at the beginning of the sentence if there is no question word another area of confusion among english learners is the usage of since and for since is used to indicate the starting point of an action that continues up to the present it's used with a specific point in time a specific starting point in time like a date or a specific event for example i have lived here since 2010. she has been studying english since she was a child in these two sentences since 2010 and since she was a child are both starting points of an action i have lived here since 2010 that's the starting point she has been studying english since she was a child that's the starting point now let's talk about for for is used to indicate the duration of an action it is used with a period of time like days months or years for example I have lived here for 10 years. She has been studying English for five years. In these two sentences, for 10 years and for five years indicate duration of time. The duration of time I have lived here and the duration of time she's been studying English. They indicate the duration of time. A quick way to remember is to always ask yourself if you're talking about when something started or how long something has been happening use since if you're talking about when something started and use for if you're talking about how long something has been happening and there you have it common english mistakes and how to avoid them keep practicing stay curious and soon you speak english like a pro Thank you so much for watching if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and of course hit the bell icon for more english tips and lessons and if you have any questions or suggestions drop them in the comments below see you again next time happy learning bye bye